Welcome to the special Tuesday night edition of <laughs> January 22nd Zoning Advisory Committee meeting. So, our agenda for tonight, we have a few um, items to discuss that we're still hoping, you know, if, if we agree on the wording of any of these tonight, we can still present them to the planning board next Monday, and the planning board has time to get them onto the warrant this year. As far as the ones that we sent forward already, planning board decided, you know, they, they did have some questions about some of them, but they decided to put them all forward for the public hearing that they hold in February or early March. So, um, so they, they thought that they were, you know, reasonable to have the public comment on. So, all right. And then what happens from there before it gets approved to be on the Okay, so it goes through the public hearing, and then the planning board votes on each right. one. And um, they're already technically on the warrant right now, but then they can remove them from the warrant if they decide after the, the public hearing to do so. Okay. All right. So uh, the first item on our agenda is changing the bylaw to remove prohibition on municipal trash collection for garden apartments and village housing developments. This was requested by Mr. Garabedian, um, by, in writing as well as in person last time. Um, and um, Elaine laid out a nice outline of where we stand right now with these developments. And um, she, she listed all the developments right now that do not have municipal trash collection. So um, all in all, it would be about a thousand units. Uh, the, the approved under Osmud is another a thousand units when complete. Is that those also do not have municipal trash collection? Is that correct? Okay. Huh. So none of these. So it would be two thousand units um, if we were to include all of them in, you know, a new ruling. So. And. Um, although I did read all of this, Elaine, <laughs> um, if you could just clarify for us, um, the rules are outlined not only in some of the definitions of different types of these developments, but also in some of the special permits and so on that each individual development received. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, for the garden apartment bylaw, so that prohibition has been in effect since 1970. And so I haven't gone back to research all the decisions, but I know that in a few of them at least, that prohibition is repeated in the decision. So in addition to removing the impediment in the zoning, the entity with jurisdiction would also have to go back and amend the special permit. It also appears in comprehensive permits, so a number of these developments were approved by comprehensive permit from the Board of Appeals under 40B. And that's also an impediment to trash collection that would have to be reversed if those developments were to receive trash collection as well. The Osmond is a little bit different. Okay. That's got a host community agreement and a separate zoning section. Um, but I could see the time when those residents say, hey, you know, all the other condominiums have it. Why, why don't we too? Right. So, okay. So there's some layers depending on how the development was approved and under what bylaw and by what special permit during what time frame and the entity who approved it, it may or may not appear again in, in a decision. And a zoning bylaw change would only apply to future developments. Is that right? It would. However, that impediment is removed and um, in, the in the future when the town has a different contract with E.L. Harvey, it could include trash collection for multifamily. Right now, that contract does not include trash collection for multifamily. Okay. I think more than <coughs> units don't have pickup. Yep. All right. And there's no trash collection for commercial. Okay. Comments? Does anybody have any sense on whether the assessor takes into consideration that they're trash collection is on the owners rather than um, the town for these garden apartments as opposed to single family homes? No, so the, a person's tax bill is based on the value of your home. 
And so that's the only assessment that's used is the value of your real estate. Right, but if, if we don't but, have a menu of when you receive a tax bill, there isn't a menu of services you wish to have and don't, so that if you don't have children in the school system, for example, you still pay taxes to support the school system. Okay. Yes, Go Carol? Ahead. Do you know how many, Elaine, how many of these places are not trash collection but dumpster situations? I don't know. Because that, in, in reading it, like our trash pickup is based on picking up trash cans. So in addition to adding the, you know, the additional properties, we would also, I think, if we opted to try and do something along these lines, have to also <coughs> add a system by which to empty dumpsters at some of these properties. Because some of them are, I know Apple Hill at least is, is a dumpster property. It's not an individual trash can at each locale. And I would also ask if there is a, is there any sort of town liability issue if they are private roads and private property? There's no trash pickup on private roads. But for instance, um, Davenport Village is a private road. So all that trash would have to come out front. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is what I understand it from DPW director that they would have to haul it down to Hayden Hill. Private roads does not go down private roads. But if also, it became a public road, that wouldn't automatically mean that then we would start to do trash pickup there. It doesn't, it's not linked. No, and they can't become public roads. Right. They're not okay. laid out as streets, so they're not streets, they're only driveways. I see, okay. And I did ask um, DPW Director John Westerling whether the town is required to have municipal trash pickup, and it's not. Mm -hmm. So there's no requirement for the community to pick up trash at all okay. curbside do we have a sense of what this is going to cost for 2,000 units I don't no. any comments because that's what's currently the issue and then future right. I don't know if there's like more efficiencies with Harvey picking up more you know but whatever the cost is. Yeah, oh, okay. So no efficiency. Sounds like this is a, a multi-faceted issue. It's certainly not just a zoning bylaw issue. And I don't think that, my, my personal opinion, I don't think we should take this up. So, thoughts? I would agree. Yeah. I also agree. I'd okay. like more, know more information about lots of about why this was decided initially. Costs. We can we can certainly leave it on our work plan and take it up later in the year, and start to examine some of the issues after we've you know dealt with some other other items on our list. See if it has merit. But I, yeah, I, my issue is for, from an equity standpoint, people buying these units should have known at the time of purchase that there was no municipal pickup and that that was part of their purchase decision initially that this unit at this price is a good deal based on this if we if we now impose upon the town the responsibility for picking up that trash the initial people that got in there kind of got a, a good deal mm -hmm. and that the extra cost is going to be spread over the rest of the town yeah, and I, I think that that's why we would have to look at the issue as, you know, what's the trade-off? You know, what, what can they pay per, I don't know, per? <laughs> I, I think there's probably something also in the zoning that there was a trade-off in the way the property was allowed to be built. And in and exchange that it wasn't for that, that it's a private road and they pay this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they, the developer chose to develop the property under that bylaw. Mm -hmm. He accepted that. It's like, to me, it's like if you buy a condo, you agree to pay condo fees from now until the day you die. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of, in my mind, the same thing. You go into a situation, this is a situation you pay for your own private trash pickup, mm -hmm. and this is the deal you get. And you either say, yes, I want to do that, or no, I don't want to do that. 
Well, I'm thinking then um, that there might be some uh, bargain cost to have these developments add on to our contract. Mm -hmm. uh, That's what versus I'm thinking, yeah. going to a separate private contract. Because I remember one of the places I lived, I had to have a private contractor, and I know it was it was expensive for me because I was one person. Right. But if I was combined with other people, the cost per unit was down, and maybe there's some way we could. Um, uh, introduce the idea, um, especially at the planning board level, that there might be some way to piggyback. That, that would be great, but as far as like the residents on Davenport, I no, the I existing, can, I can the existing, I don't see, I don't see any change in downtown. Well, not only that, you don't want to look at that, mm. which is part of my issue. <laughs> 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 Just drop your trash on the way <laughs> I mean, it's not nice. It's just, it's unfortunate. But so, yeah, so I, I think that if there's some way we can help the future, I don't know how you do because it's too too complicated whether it's built into the the way they were permitted. Mm -hmm. All right. But I, but I think you've got an item that, you know, that we'll be able to expand on and we, mm -hmm. we can look into it at least in the future. Yeah. I think it would be interesting to know how many of these um, you know, housing development, how many of them actually want municipal trash pickup? Because I'm not thinking of Indian Brook having, you know, trash truck go down the road to all those different condos and all these, you mm -hmm. know, individual condo owners having to be responsible for getting their trash out and where they keep their trash cans. So, um, you know, so we heard, we heard from one person who, maybe he represents a lot of people, but I don't, I don't know how many of these condo owners are not happy with the situation they have. So. Right. So public hearing feedback? Yeah. Could be something in the future. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. The next item on our agenda is the maximum size of retail uses in Industrial A and Industrial B districts. So currently limited to 2,000? Is that right? Yes. Yes. Currently limited to 2,000 in both Industrial A and Industrial B. And is this by right currently? That was the request. Okay, the, the request was to, to increase the size and, and put it by right. Okay. okay. Any thoughts, comments? What is by right today? By right. It is by right, yeah. but it's only up to 2,000 square feet. Yeah. Okay. So, what are the thoughts on, on this? I'm in favor of increasing it to 5,000. I'm not sure that it's going to make a meaningful difference one way or the other, but if, if it does bring some additional revenue to the town by having something go in, I would be in favor of it. Do you know how big, just because I have difficulty, you know, picturing things in my head, how big is the CVS square footage wise? Typically, CVSs are 14,500 square feet. The Ex Coelas? The, the Ex Coelas, I think, was about that size with the Martys. Okay. So it could be a little bit less. But, but that's about 50. Yeah, I mean, that's. So it might be half the size of the Coelho CVS, 5,000 feet. A third, more than, a th closer to a third, I think. Well, but she said it's with the models included. Yeah, the, the building. Is about 14, 15,000? I, I think that the, the full building is over 14,000 feet. But I, as far as trying to get to, you understand what 5,000 feet looks like? Right. I'm trying to think of what would be a good choice. Well, the 110 grill is 4,800 feet. Just letting the kitchen. Yeah. Okay. So 2,000 square feet is pretty tiny. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a really well, small. <clears throat> I think it depends <clears throat> on, on what we want to encourage to, to be in those districts. Yeah. Right. You know, it, it's, it's a lot bigger than the... the um, country farms so if 
if that's I don't yeah. you know I think we need to talk about what kind of uses we're looking to get into those district in that retail space it's not going to be a Walmart it's not going to be a big box store it's not going to be this or that but it's it's bigger than a convenience store mm -hmm. so what are we what are we looking to encourage now well even convenience stores are getting bigger now you know when you when you look at all the um, gas stations and how much bigger they're getting Mm -hmm. You know the, the the one that's you know they they, they just bought up um, Cliff's house. That's going to be like three or four times bigger than it is now. Elaine, um, what is the process if someone were to want to put a retail establishment in that is larger now? Could they go for a special permit? Would it be a variance, or would it be just not even a possibility? It would be a variance, but it's unlikely that they could meet the. The statutory requirements for a variance having the shape, soils, and topography of the lot. Okay. So, so what if we were to um, say under the special, uh, say under um, under the industrial A industrial B districts as a special permit um, to go up to, you know, 10,000, 15,000 square feet. But they'd have to go through the special permit process. Well, what, if, if I may, through the chair, one of the things that we're trying to do, again, there's only there's two reasons for zoning: to to um, try and encourage or discourage. Now, there are members of this of this committee that believe that um, people don't mind going through a litigation in order to in order to uh, open up a business. But especially for a business it's as small as litigation. No, I, think that's, I think that's, that's harsh. Yes. But it still is. You still have to get a lawyer. It's this legal. It's not litigation. The ZBA is still legal. It's not litigation. It's not litigation. Sorry, you're using the wrong term. Well, you know, if one of this lawyers involved, there's yeah. there's briefs. There's there's <laughs> hey, look. I had to, you know I had to do it just to put a handicap ramp in my mother's house. You know, it was still. I had to get. I had to get a lawyer. I had to go in front of the CBA. It was. A, it was a formal process. It's a. You know, it's a. It's a quasi judicial process. But anyway, um, you know. It's so if we if we want to, you know, if somebody's open up a two thousand or five thousand square foot uh, um, uh, establishment, it's not. They're not big bucks people. Mm -hmm. it, it's you know. So even even ten thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars or fifteen thousand dollars can make it make or break. They're, they're deciding whether or not to to open it or not. You know, and so so again, what are we trying to encourage with fifteen thousand square feet? What are we trying to encourage retail wise in that area? No, we said five thousand square feet. And I was I was just throwing out numbers. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so so what do so what's our vision of what we want in those districts? So currently it says only certain convenience stores and stuff like that, right? So are we only talking about those that are allowed right now or are we expanding the scope of that? We're talking about, yeah, possibly larger ones. Um, but, but it does, does it say anything about yep, just retail says, use in general? It, no, it does. It says convenience or profit into the immediate neighborhood, selling items such as groceries, prepared takeout food, toilet articles, cosmetics, candy, sunrise, medications, newspapers, magazines, and ice cream provided. However, that any such retail store may operate only between the hours of 6 and 10. So I'm thinking it sounds like a convenience store, so we're not, there's already a restriction that that it needs to be something like a convenience store. Are we expanding the scope or are we just thinking of for convenience stores, can it go up to 5,000? Well, I would consider, you know, I would consider opening it up. Use, that, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I don't think um, that's As long as it's not a, we don't have a, a box, a Walmart, or something like that. Oh. So. Yeah, no, I, I don't uh, mind. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to understand so the, a, what are we thinking yeah. about, sir? I think we can think about either one, but. Elaine, does the current definition in uh, Industrial A and Industrial B for retail include all retail uses or just convenience store? Just what's described. Just, what's just, what's just described. described, okay. Um, 
so we go back to what happened in the 90s when everyone went and did big box stores in places where were rezoned industrial and a lot of communities and this community decided not to allow that all right they, they decided that for whatever reason at that time I think that uh, in hindsight that was a good decision um, we see a lot of the big box stores you know really not being very healthy today mm -hmm. in general yeah okay um, the other issue that we discussed earlier was the fact that we don't want a big box and not enough people employed in in that box which is the whole thing with the self storage um, mm -hmm. restriction and the reason why I brought up the categories and intent is because if we're changing the vision for this particular district because retail really isn't an industrial use then we ha it's a bigger conversation and we really need to d dive in and say okay what about if we do some planned development guidelines and give a carrot to a developer talk about you know more futuristic uh, ways of enhancing a district instead of enlarging parking lots because you think you're going to lose 200 employees I think that this is a, a bigger conversation and requires probably some kind of a, a special group to just study the different options for these districts um, I mentioned before when we were talking about Franklin Road that we if we want to encourage a good use at Franklin Road we might want to encourage some kind of a public transportation system because it's out in the woods you don't want to have you know hundreds of cars going there you want to have some kind of semblance of respect to the other neighbors around it but still if you offered that to a potential buyer or a tenant or something like that maybe that's everything that they need I mean I, I was trying to watch the um, uh, the HCAM uh, hearing with uh, what was the name of the company that's taking 97 South Street like yeah so so I, I, I they, they chopped it off they, they didn't give me the entire thing but um, you know that particular company was looking for a TIF for future um, but I didn't hear anybody ask them what other things that would enhance their business I just heard well are you going to be a higher bio person than you know what we like here so it's kind of like a negative like a pushback versus or how many people do you intend to hire from the local community I mean these are the things that would enhance our community instead of like say okay uh, you're going to take our empty building well that's great but uh, you don't want to pay all these taxes and that's not so great and like what are you going to bring to us I mean I, I felt that the tone was not exactly like hey why don't we try to figure out you know other means to enhance your business because these businesses they, they're looking for sites today they're looking for lowering their costs and making more profits making more sales and getting the talent and being near the airport. So those are the two things that, you know, Lynn Tukarsik is an expert at this. She's a wonderful, you know, she's, she does this for a lot of companies. And we should be reaching out to her on a regular basis. But, so, I think it's a bigger conversation. I would, I would recommend to the chair that we have some kind of a, you know, uh, a group effort that looks at- A charrette? A charrette, maybe. <laughs> But somebody, you know, coming up with some ideas. I mean, I, I came up with the public transportation. I mean, uh, in India, by the year 2035, every vehicle is supposed to be an electric vehicle in India. I mean, that's fantastic. We have two main roads in town. One goes this way, one goes this way. And everybody else is sort of off those roads. We had a bus that was electric bus that just went two ways. We get a lot of people off the road. Just one idea, but but this is the kind of zoning stuff. It's bigger than just you know, is it two thousand, is it five thousand square feet? I mean, I, I I don't think that that really makes a beam of difference. I really don't, and I I think that we need to look at why we're trying to do that. If it is going to be supplementing, you know, a community style campus program, great. What's that noise? Any other thoughts? 
Uh, I agree, and I'll make it short, just to echo. I worry about finding short-term answers for stuff where we ought to be more long. Let, there's an empty building, let's fill it as quickly as we can, instead of thinking, what does that mean five years down the road? And so I would concur. Go slowly, let's be really thoughtful about what we're doing and suggest. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I would like to suggest that as we look at trying to define these various things, that, you know, as, as we were saying, to come up with some type of a study group that looks at how do, how do these definitions enhance our master plan as it as it's put together. I mean, a lot of time and energy went into this master plan. And what are the zoning impediments to achieving this? What do we, what should we change and what should we encourage? So as you know, is, is Hoppington open for business or closed for business? Are we open for residential development or closed for residential development? Those are things that I think zoning can be very helpful with, but it, this is, it, it's not a quick study. This is, I mean, I'm, I'm echoing what everybody's saying. This is, a, this is a very intense discussion, but I think we have to begin with the end in mind to some degree, which says, are we trying to accomplish the master plan? And if so, what do we have to do to get from where we are to where we, we need to be? Any further thoughts on this? Because really the, you know, the redesign of the Zoning Advisory Committee was in part to allow us to tackle bigger, bigger picture issues and longer term type of discussions. So not, not to say that a study group that's separate <laughs> might not be a good idea in certain cases. But uh, yeah. well, maybe it's the study group as a whole once, yeah. we, once we get past the, the deadline for town meeting. Yeah. So I'd say we table this until we have some of that longer term discussion. Go ahead, Carol. I, I agree with that entirely. Um, the only other thing that I would suggest is that we look at industrial A and industrial B as two separate things. Mm -hmm. They're two very different I agree areas. That, I agree that they need to be separate, but yeah. It, it doesn't mean we won't sometimes mm -hmm. add to both at the same time, yeah. But but yeah, I, I, believe, I believe they're very different. And the ne so we're going to table that. We're not going to cross it off the list entirely. It's still going to be on the work plan for potential future discussion. Um, the next item was allowing theaters, halls, and clubs by right in the business and downtown business districts. <coughs> so theaters, halls, and clubs. Well, nobody's Are building theaters anymore. Yeah, nobody has it in their own homes. Really? Well, I would love to go to a club. Team. I would love to go to a club in downtown Hockington. But I don't want to drive home from it. Right. <laughs> and I don't want to try to park there either. So we we'll we'll get you a bus. <laughs> we'll <move on. laughs> That's true. Okay. So can I ask, like, is there any specific reason why this came up as a topic? Does anyone know? According to Scott, there was no, there's no specific demand saying, you know, if we had this zoning, we would come. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, is there a specific property that could really be this? I mean, I think of the post office could be a possibility because they're going to get rid of post offices eventually. I mean, that's downtown business, right? Center school turn into a concert hall? There you go. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good idea. Because there's parking CBS. for that. CVS. I don't think we're going to see CVS move. Center school is not business. Not business. In our lifetime time. <laughs> uh, I will say, I, one area of business that came up in Zach a couple of years ago, we had people asking to extend it, is right in front of the middle school. I think that would be a horrible place for a club. <laughs> <laughs> so just looking at the map where the business districts are, um, you know, I, I could picture, that's where uh, the truck with the Christmas lights is and, right. and uh, mm -hmm. Soul Black is in there. Uh, we do have um, 
the HCA and they have a theater and that's nice of something like that. But the idea of a club or late night music and what is, while it's zone business, it's a school and residential business. So, I don't know where this is all going, but, but I would be very worried about that little piece of business district being the home to a club. Most of the business districts do abut residential properties. True, but the downtown feels yeah. like a place where you go, there's a restaurant, you can get a, a drink and then go to the theater. Right. And then, you know, right next door is somebody's house. So I, I like the idea of keeping the special permit process because it gives the ZBA an opportunity to um, hear members from the public, abutters, people in the neighborhood who can argue that it's detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, and also we can impose when appropriate certain conditions um, and as was brought up it's at the last meeting it's fairly easy to get a special permit but it's nice to have that um, that safety net um, especially since a lot of these areas are in residential neighborhoods or about oh. residential neighborhoods a special permit doesn't transfer with the property no which I think is important in, in this particular item mm -hmm. yeah I would tend to agree with you I, yeah, I, I don't. I actually don't see that it would be highly likely to be built or a business like this opened in Hopkinton. Um, but no, I was just going to say that after the downtown corridor project, you never know what's going to happen. It's true. Good point. After what where? downtown corridor project? The beautification of uh, downtown in oh. a few years. So. Yeah, when is that going to start? Years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 years ago. <laughs> I got a problem. We, do we have a definition for clubs in our uses? I don't think so. So, uh, yeah, because this is this gets into this gray area. You know, um, let's say Central Public House decides to put a band in their dining room. Lodge. <laughs> the dining room. Does that turn the, them into a club? I don't know. I, I mean... I think that the meaning was private clubs. Oh. Um, like Oregon Club, like in Southboro. Okay. Oh. Yeah, vintage of. Yeah, that, that's um, actually what I think. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said Moose Lodge. That being said, it gets interpreted in the modern day. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So now I'm. Mm. Yeah. I was going to say something when you were talking about clubs, but I just uh, figured I'd let it go. Yeah, but that's what they meant. That was what it was. It was I'm, I'm, I'm back dead serious. I'd take a bus to go downtown and go dancing. I don't really see the point of changing this to a buy right. I do. Okay. Let's draw a poll. Okay. Let's cross it off our list. Shoe and <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Leah. Why don't you tell us what you think? Okay. So, I mean, there's there's lots of discussion um, online with different towns on, you know, people who have bylaws and people who don't have bylaws. We have a bylaw that doesn't allow people to shove their snow out of their driveway and onto the street. We have a bylaw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's under sidewalks and streets. And I'm thinking that this potential bylaw could add to that section, which is, oh, by the way, you should shield your cans when they're not in, you know, being put out. And uh, they should be taken in 24 hours later after pickup. It's pretty simple. Otherwise, we get, you know, cans that are all over the place. And what I see on my street is I see that people are... It started off with one or two, and now there's like four or five, and then it keeps going <laughs> because it's like some people have done it forever, and new people are coming into the, the the neighborhood, and they're starting to copy those people, and I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. And I know that in other neighborhoods, you would never see that. Like your neighborhood, John. You'd never see people. No, I'm just, I'm, just I mean, afraid, I'm just afraid of my wife. I'll, I'll admit it. <laughs> it. It's just crazy. So, I mean, there are... Um, I never see it in my neighborhood either. No. I mean, you know, I, I copied a couple of bylaws from other towns, but, um, 
you know, generally speaking, if you've got trash cans, you sh they should be behind your building or in your garage or out of sight and during the time that's not that somebody wanting to walk, especially in this temperature now, wanting to walk all the way up to the front of their house to throw something away and then walk all the way back in without pulling that trash barrel back in closer to the house so they don't have to walk out the next time. Yeah. You just drop it when you're driving out of the driveway. Um, and then wow. just so shielding the cans and then having a time certain when they're supposed to be pulled in. I mean, the enforcement of this is everything, but. But um, Ray, Ray commented on this one and said that uh, it's, it's outside of Zach's purview that we'd have to do this one as a general. Yeah, it, yeah. Would, it would have to be a general. But we'd have to do this as a general. Do we not have anything? Hmm? In the general bylaws that would cover this? No. Nope. We don't. We have snow, but we don't have this. People just, so people come from other towns and they were behaved in those other towns that bring their behavior here. And when they see someone not doing the right thing, they are increasing the habit. Hmm? I mean... <laughs> There's a lot of discussion in on the net on this stuff because it is crazy. <laughs> so, I, I understand what you're saying, but I, I'm trying to see the other perspective. Say, for instance, my neighborhood, you never, usually it's all, it's gone in like an hour or two. Yeah. So if somebody has left it out, they're really not in town or something is going on, but they'll get fined for something that happens once in a while mm -hmm. that I leave and you go on vacation and stuff like that so so that's where the enforcement comes in we don't have an enforcement officer that can be everywhere all the time so chances are it's the one person that's going to be on vacation that's not what we're talking about we're talking about the fact that people have figured out a place in the front of their house <coughs> right on the street and that's where they have their trash all the time and I'm recycling I honestly don't believe that putting a general bylaw in place to this effect will change people's behavior because I don't believe that we'll be you know we have the manpower to enforce this as there's a lot of things that aren't enforced right now <coughs> and but it's best dealt with by talking to your neighbors well I, I I think that if you can point to the fact that this is a bylaw, then they were more likely to pay attention to it than if I just say randomly, oh, I've been only on the street for 14 years, and this person's been there for 40 years. If I may, to the chair, why don't we bounce this, you know, if, Elaine, if you could get, if I, if I could, you know, let's, let's, look, let's look at the ones that came from the other towns. Um, let's bring it to the Board of Selectmen meeting and then let's bounce it off the uh, zoning enforcement officer because this is what this is one of the things that happened to us last year when we, when we were trying to do a more comprehensive um, uh, what we call it the nuisance bylaw oh, yes. two years ago okay yeah, actually I think we did Twice. We tried to get it. Yeah, yeah, we tried to get it. Yeah, we well, actually we tried doing it through the board of selectmen last year. We actually we tried doing it double the year before, yeah. and, and it failed both times. And we brought it up again last year, and it got shot down. So um, I'm just suggesting now that this go under sidewalks and and streets section of our general bylaw, which is where the snow removal <laughs> stuff goes. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's not like a whole new big section. It's just one, another addition. Well, but comes, I'm just talking about the enforcement. But we'll, we'll probably go through the right. enforcement officer. Would we'll probably be the one that has to do it. Right. And so that's why we end up passing it over for them for for their input because um, it's only it's only fair. But no, we'll, we'll just because we have we actually have a meeting on on Friday, a, a special select which meeting on Friday and another one on Tuesday. No. Oh. I'm not against the spirit of your idea. But just looking at the snow removal, the key difference is it says you're not allowed to put snow to impede traffic. If the trash cans are not in the way of the traffic or a sidewalk, it's two kind of pretty different things. 
I don't know if they are. I haven't seen the, the trash cans. I don't know what the name of it. It impedes my, my beauty of my neighborhood. That's what it does. <laughs> That's a different thing. And that gets closer to what we struggled with, with the, with the garbage in people's backyards, where people said, but it's my garbage. Leave me alone. Yeah. Um, again, I, the spirit of your idea, I'm completely in favor of. They're not exactly parallel. The snow, it doesn't say you can't put snow in the street. It says you can't put snow in the street to impede traffic. Right. And that's a subjective. And Carol element. knowing the trick of how to get it out to your driveway without getting cold. That's another one I've got me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about that. I'm talking about your neighbor. It's just like you, you don't have any ability to go to a neighbor and say, hey, by the way, this, you know, this really is not appropriate. Um, without them saying, hey, look at, leave me alone. You know what I mean? It, and, I, and I feel like... It, it is subjective, though. I mean, some people don't have an issue with it. You know, don't have I an know, issue but with... that's what our town no, looks and, like. You know, and, and some of those things may fly. You know, I was just at, nice. over the weekend, I was at the National Municipal Association, and I went to a, a, a bunch of different uh, training sessions and symposiums and everything, and one of them was on the... Um, uh, plastic bag banning mm -hmm. bylaws that go through. We ha we have we have one that actually it's through an ordinance through through the uh, uh, board of health. Um, but um, you know, and then Nantucket was talking about what they're doing uh, in some of the towns in Nantucket, where they're they're going through and banning um, single use everything. Yep. Um, even coffee cups. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts are going to work in that case. You bring your own cup now or something. But they, you know, over the next couple of years, they're looking on being everything. So, so you know, there, there could be an appetite in town for for doing to for you know more restrictive um, rules and regulations in order to help beautify the area. You don't know what the appetite is. So, so we'll definitely talk about it uh, uh, at. Uh, at the board of selectmen meeting, see what see what happens. It's, you know, I have no idea. Things surprise the heck out of me nowadays. <laughs> me too, but it wasn't this bad when I first got there. And now, like I said, there's a couple of people more and a couple of people more, and now it's like every other house has got their trash cans out all week long. I'm going to drive by and see now. <laughs> yes, you must. You should. You should. I know. Go first. Taking a field trip. <laughs> that's my way home. And this is pulling out of there. That's so scary to pull yeah, out of. That's, yeah. Oh, in the morning. It's, you know, I don't try and hit up to I mean, the I think, down I think and it back probably up. is a, an issue in a couple of other neighbors to, neighborhoods as well, maybe on Downey as well. Any of these, like where the houses are close together, some of the people are older, or whatever. But I mean, even my 92-year-old neighbor across the street from me, she pulls in her can and puts it behind her house. I mean, it's like you don't help her. We'll do the floor. No, we we oh, try we try to clear, clear her driveway on a regular basis, though. So maybe we can, maybe Carol can teach her how to do it from her car and drop it off. <laughs> Trash cans go in every week. Yeah, <laughs> me too. In a fashion. Okay, uh, so we're going to suggest this to the selectmen to mm -hmm. consider for a general bylaw. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. On to suggested changes to the signs bylaw. Oh boy. Signage. Okay, so if you take a look at the. I think it was here the last time this went through. Find this one. Okay. Oh, well, come on. Everybody's been here for this. We have done. We do it every three years. Exactly. And it takes three. Okay. So, under sign regulations by zoning district, which is page 14 of our packet, 210-180. And there's A, one, two in the business, downtown business, and rural business districts. Mm -hmm. And then there's letter B, lowercase letter B, under number two, okay? <laughs> Following me? Nope. Um, and that is at the very top of page 15 in our packet. What's the number on the bottom of the page? Number at the bottom of the page is four. Okay. Okay. 
except as otherwise provided herein, one standing sign per lot shall be allowed not to exceed 32 square feet in area. Lots that have frontage on more than one public way may have two standing signs on the lot, um, each along a different public way. The height of standing signs shall not exceed 10 feet. Um, there was suggestion based on the discussion around this the in the design review board around the um, central public house sign and the, the downtown business district and it had to do with the fact that they have a center pole and a sign that hangs out you know on either side um, and they're in a unique situation because their storefront isn't right on the public way. It's pushed back because of that patio. So signage that's on their building, which follows, you know, follows all the rules about signage directly on the building, is actually not visible from Main Street. So they needed a sign farther out. Makes sense. Um, the problem was the height of the sign from the ground up. So there was no, there's no limitation in our bylaws as to saying you shouldn't have a sign that people are going to knock their heads on. I think that's relatively logical, but oh, so a minimum of like seven a feet minimum of something. from the ground of six. Yeah, because this is seven point five feet. That's what it was. There was nothing we could do about it. Yeah. So that is the reason there's, there's a suggestion to include or to add a sentence to the effect of the clearance from the ground. So. Let me look it up. Thoughts? Let me look up what well, the municipal code is. Most signs that would fall under this clause in my mind would not be signs that you walk under. Right. right. But if they have, you know, if, if there's two poles, there's one on each side, then, and you know, it's, it's flush with the sign itself, it's not an issue. But they have one pole in the center with the sign hanging off of it. That's where it becomes an issue. And where, for instance, this is just an example from, uh -huh. from this particular situation, but um, this is partially on their patio and partially on the sidewalk. Okay. Right. Um, which is, you know, the public sidewalk. And eight feet. Eight feet? Eight feet, section 11.51, minimum height of ground limitation of projection. Is eight feet. So, Design Review Board should have been able to use that. We didn't know that. Oh, okay. That's why okay. I just decided. We didn't know that, and Georgia didn't know it. And oh. So. Yeah. It's, it's, well, it's the same thing if, if, you're, if you're building anything or if you're, if you're putting up stage, you know, anything right. like that. Right. That's all comes in. So, the, the, the maximum height was 10 feet tall. Right. And so you're saying that the minimum is 8 feet tall. If it's going over a sidewalk or projecting right. any more than 6 inches off of a building. So that's in our bylaw already. No, it's in the state. It's state. It's, a, it's, it's a state. state. Yeah. So we can we could add it, or we could simply say, you know, refer to the state <laughs> laws. <laughs> or someone could choose to do a sign with two poles or a monument sign. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Which so would this, or they could which would not sign. have this problem. In, in the central public house, did they move the sign so that it wasn't projecting over the sidewalk? It's still projecting over part of the um, the, the public way, but there's, I don't know if it's technically the public way, pardon me. It's, um, there's <laughs> some bushes <laughs> yeah. underneath it. Yeah. Oh, so like it's a little bit of mulch. Yeah. So you can't, as long as you can't walk under it, it's... Well, you can walk under it if you go, go slightly into the mulch off the sidewalk, you know, so... Yeah, I thought it was yeah. moved so that it was a not over a non-pedestrian location. Well, it, technically the mulch and the bushes are non-pedestrian, but... And the part that's in uh, over their patio as I was saying, you know, it's, it's, well, it's their liability. Somebody knocks their head on it. 
So one would assume that they'll put something underneath it so people won't walk that way. <laughs> but so <clears throat> just to help me understand, design review said we'd like you to make the sign higher so that people don't hit their head, and they said no. They said they've already designed it. They can't. can't They'd already. It. Yeah, we had this issue where the guy had fabricated the signs before he came to us. <laughs> and this was the only place he could put it, legitimately uh, on the patio. It was it was it was complicated to just to kind of describe to you. <laughs> She's looking at me, <laughs> but I um, I would say that out of all the signs that we've reviewed since we started reviewing signs, this is a one of. Yeah. So. There's, there's got to be a certain amount of logic, though, with people that are, are operating businesses that you don't want to put a sign up that people are going to hurt themselves on. That that's, was, was my so, reaction as well. It's like I, I some people would ask about play, they want to be hurt. Yeah. Visiting that town. But I, I do believe that there is some, some plantings that are planned for underneath it, which is going to prevent a, an accident, which is what we were trying to get. You know... Poor guy, he's a restaurant guy. He was opening. He was like, I just, I just need to open. <laughs> I mean, I, I, we were like trying to get that through as quickly as possible because, you know, everyone was anticipating that restaurant. Mm -hmm. So, the sign looks nice, by the way. <laughs> it's up now. Well, I don't think that we should really worry about this one. Okay. I would agree. Anyone else? All right. But yeah, I think that, you know. There's there's no way that our bylaws can capture every single situation that we're going to come across, and um, it's that's impossible. <laughs> we do the best we can in most situations. Okay. All right. So, John, we're going to skip that one. You okay? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Since it's a quick one, I'm going to skip ahead to the Osmond Overlay District Amendments. This is, um, Elaine, I'm going to let you go through this because it's a relatively straightforward. Yeah. Okay, this tonight, um, some draft modifications to Section 2.16 um, of the Osmond District, which is the Lisa Farms area. And it um, addresses two issues that have come up over the over the last year. And the first um, is as it relates to the um, age restricted development that's under construction now uh, off of Wilson Street and Legacy Farms North. Um, the intent was to um, restrict residents to 55 and over, and the developer proposed language that. Um, was adopted a couple of years ago that said that no child under the age of 18 may be a resident of the development. However, um, some of these units, 25% of the units have to be affordable under state programs and the state will not approve um, affordable units with this restriction. So from their perspective, um, language that says that one resident has to be 55 and over, but they will not approve any affordable units have restrictions said that no children just they can't do that with fair housing laws and so forth so um, we're proposing to change this to mirror the definition of senior housing development in the Osmond so in your packet was the entire Osmond district and in the definition section of that was the definition of senior housing development which has this exact same language that one resident must be 55 and over. So this mirrors the definition that's already in the Osmond district today. Okay. If we don't make this change, then they cannot provide 25% affordable and they will not be in compliance with the zoning or the host community agreement. So it's, a, it's an infinite loop that was created by this by law amendment that shouldn't have been adopted. So what do you recommend? So I'm recommending the language that was distributed um, today, which basically takes out no child under the age of 18 may be a resident and says that at least one resident of every dwelling unit be 55 years of age or older. And town council has reviewed that and they came up with the same language. Now, does that mean that every unit in what has been 
land as a senior housing development. Every unit has the potential for children to be there. Mm -hmm. So we can't we cannot make this limited to the 25% affordable units. You might be able to, but when DHCD reviews the condominium documents and so forth, it's going to see that. Mm -hmm. And so that might also kick them out. Okay. So when I talked to the woman at DHCD, she said that language to the effect that we're proposing would be okay. Okay. So it would be the same as the other over 55 developments that we currently have in town. I don't think we have a problem with, with children. So making it consistent with... Um, I'm curious, what does that mean we don't have a problem? Does that mean there are no kids in there? Is that I, don't know, I don't know if there are none, but there aren't very many, if there are. We, we Sanctuary Lane has, has some. Occasionally there's a few. Yeah. But didn't Sanctuary Lane turn? Didn't didn't isn't that not a bound? It's it's another affordable uh, over fifty five development, and they also under fair housing laws at times, if an over fifty five buyer can't be found, they can be sold to people under fifty five mm -hmm. because of federal fair housing laws. That's the problem with over fifty five, which Judy Barrett has discussed with us in the past yeah because i know in real estate you can't ask anything right okay. right okay so the proposal is to allow the affordable units to go forward and if we don't do this they can't provide the affordable units and then we i think have a bigger problem and i'm just stuff. curious this doesn't affect the language but is this the, the part of Legacy Farms that maybe three years ago at town meeting we voted to allow to shift from commercial? Yes, to yes, and that's yeah. where this language went in there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just wanted to make sure that that was the same. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? So, do we need a motion? To yeah, I believe so. I can go through the other one first, or if you wanted to wait, we could do that. Oh, there's another one? All at once? You can do them both at once. Oh, beautiful. Them separately. Okay, well, no, let's go through the other one. Okay. Yeah. The other one is uh, further down on the same page, and this addresses an issue that has come up with um, Fairview Estates, which is the, um, the retirement home on East Main Street, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, which is part of Legacy Farms. And uh, when they were building the development, um, they included uh, units for their on-site 24-hour full-time staff and because there was a cap on the number of dwelling units in Legacy Farms they could not include kitchens in those units so the um, the employees who are living there don't have a kitchen in their units the operator of the facility has tried to make this work but they're having a hard time keeping people who are willing to live there because they don't have an independent living situation yeah. in their own apartment. So they've been discussing with the town, you know, how do we, how can we possibly fix this? And so one of the um, options that's been reviewed by town council is the language that's proposed, which would allow them to have an on-site apartment for permanent live-in resident um, who is a full-time employee of the facility and those would not count toward the total of the, um, of the dwelling unit cap. And it's important that they do have, you know, good on-site 24 staff at the location. And so they really would like to see if we can accommodate them in this regard. So if we do this, are they just going to put kitchens in existing units? Or are they going to build additional units? Or? I believe they would modify the units as they exist to put in a, a kitchen. Yeah, I remember they came up, they, they, they discussed this last year with us, I believe. Um, yeah, they, they've, they've gone through a, a bunch of different managers at, uh, yeah, I mean, it was at Fairview, because um, they, they don't have, you know, basically it's a, it's a hotel room that they're asked to live in, mm -hmm. and there's nowhere for them to cook or, or anything for themselves. And they do manage, uh, they have a number of these locations elsewhere, and they have the, the full unit, and they're able to keep and retain good people. 
Was the zoning for the Fairview site, was that um, a site that required a special permit for this use? No, that was a commercial use. It was a commercial use, so was that by right? Yes. There was no, okay. Hmm. Are these permanent? Like, do these people that are living in these apartments, is that their only place that they live? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that they're coming with spouses or children or it's possible. anything? possible, yeah. I don't know how big the units are. But it's possible that they would have at least a spouse. And if they built them with kitchenettes or whatever they need in other places, why didn't they do it here? Because it would have counted at the And they wanted to get as many of the other units as they could. And they have already. And then come back to us and say, now can we have more? Well, they'd already been allotted elsewhere, too, mm -hmm. at the time. I mean, it's either that or you could raise the cap. But I don't, I don't know if that's where the town wants to go. Any other discussion? I mean, that the residents will only be an employee of, of the location. So they're asking the town to see if they can work on this. What about this last part here which says, and one occupant of the apartment is a full-time employee of the facility. What if they're not an employee of the facility, but they're a private um, care provider? No, this is for the, if I may to the chat, this is for, for the person that, that the manager, uh, just speaking from Fairview, this is for the, for the live-in manager or, or, or facility director. Just the director, not for the right, specific not the individual, care providers. No, because yeah, be, be, being a yeah, because there's there's a um, uh, a dining room for for all the residents, so none of the residents have anything in their apartments. Do you know how many units we're talking about? It's either one or two. Can we can we limit it in some way so that it? I don't envision it blossoming, but. Just to be more defined. To, we could, yeah, this sort of feels to me like we're yeah. giving them carpet to do a whole bunch of stuff. I think Fairview is managing they, the system it, manager. That's all they have. They have a very small staff. Could limit it to two per per facility. I I would that be a lot more about comfortable about with yeah. that. I'm not opposed to the the thing, but it just seems like it's too mm -hmm. generous. Okay. Yeah, we could do that. All right, with that, that notification. Okay. Good, because I wasn't getting it. <laughs> okay, so, so where was that go? Can you um, Limit provide two a, units per facility. It's a, um, yeah, limited. So provided that such apartment is located within the facility, one occupant of the apartment is a full-time employee of the facility, and there should be no more than two such apartments within the facility, within a facility. Within each facility. No more than Well, there's sure. only one facility, correct? At the present, I mean, there could be more in the future. Mm hmm Actually. For each facility. All right. All right. So do I have to read the whole thing? <laughs> okay, I'll make a motion. <laughs> I'll make a motion that in 210-166, Intensity of use limitations, subpart A, to delete no child under the age of 18 may be a resident in any such and replace it with at least one resident of every dwelling unit be 55 years of age or older. And then um, add in at the, at the end, just before B, no on-site apartment which provides a permanent living residence for 24-hour on-site responsi responsible staff of a continued care retirement community or assisted living facility shall be deemed a dwelling unit for the purposes of this intensity of use limitation provided that such apartment is located within the facility and one occupant of the apartment is a full-time employee of the facility and no more than two apartments for each facility. Well, that's, that's you got to fix that up for us, Council Ted. Council will work. 
the justice there, though. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the facility too many uh, times. This version. Yes. Yeah. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Okay. And there's one other potential change coming that town council is working on for the Osmond. It has to do with the um, with the parcel that the town owns on East Main Street and an international marathon center. So we're still okay. working on that. That'll have to. That go might directly. have to go straight to the planning board. It'll have to go directly. To the yeah. Planning. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is the the one that we are um, sending up to the planning board for their meeting next Monday, and that will be it for this particular town meeting. Cool. I think you did a good job. I think we all did. Okay, so on to our favorite topic: <laughs> zoning district definitions. Oh, cool. And I did. Um, I I liked that economic development self-assessment tool, Town of Hopkinton report that you put at the end of our um, our packet. That was very very helpful. Very good. Um, and actually echoed some of the discussion we had earlier about there being some um, working groups around economic development and defining exactly what we Yeah, I mean, zoning is just one tool. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I had kind of hoped to have a whiteboard or something along those lines for this kind of discussion about the zoning district definitions. Um, because because I think it's you know it's it's a big issue and we need to um, look at it from a lot of different directions so one is um, is what are the classic definitions of words you know industrial commercial retail um, business use um, that sort of thing um, for instance, a daycare facility, I don't know where it would fall in, in amongst that, those types of things. Um, or educational, or whether or not, you know, that, that would, that would uh, include that. Um, and then, just because there's a difference between like the small I industrial, you know, what that means in, you know, in, in Webster, <laughs> versus what we are calling our industrial A district, our industrial B district, and clearly defining the differences there. Um, so, and then of course, when we get to you know talking about our town, um, what can we learn from other towns like Franklin, of course, um, and and any you know any other uh, information that we find from other towns, um, and um, we can define what we see there now and then we can also clearly define what we believe <coughs> the past intent of these districts may have been we won't be able to know for sure but <laughs> we can at least say yes we believe the intent was this and that if there's definitions within the master plan we should look at those as well Okay, so th these are the kind of the things I want us to just, instead of diving right into what should it be, what should we have for our future, um, just to have those definitions very clearly so we know what we're talking about, what, is, what exists in zones right now, which does not have to define the future, um, and, what, and, then, and then using master plan and, and other information, define what we are going forward. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, I think it's most important to use the master plan more than, you know, we, we should always learn from the past, but we have to remember that the, the zoning was originally ad, uh, adopted in Hopkinton during the Korean War. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, when we start thinking about it, it was in the early 1950s. Yeah. And so what we thought of as industrial, and what we thought of as retail, what we thought of as, as business back then is a lot different now. With, with many people working from home and telecommuting and everything else and, and uh, you know Amazon being the, the um, biggest retailer in the world mm -hmm. you know and, but now Amazon is building is, is getting into brick and mortar 
you know, they have these million square foot warehouses, but they're doing smaller warehouses like what they did in, uh, in uh, Milford uh, over the holidays. They took over the old TJ Maxx and, and the old Stop and Shop, and they were doing all their shipping out of there. So you have to start thinking what they, what's, what is the future going to bring? Okay. So, business dictionary industry is manufacturing or technically productive enterprises in a particular field. Any general business activity or commercial enterprise that can be isolated from others, such as the tourist industry or entertainment industry. So, those are just broad, the broad definition. Um, would you say commercial and retail are the same thing, or? No. No. Okay. Retail is under commercial. Right. Okay. Okay, so commercial. Commercial is a broad, broad. Commercial is basically broad commerce. Anything. Yeah. Trade. And then under commercial, it's industrial, manufacturing, retail. Okay. Office. Okay. So there, the Franklin definition kind of differs from that, for instance. Yes. Are we looking at Franklin right So now? that's, you know, that's a good. Did you get it, Franklin? This, these are Franklin, right? Okay. okay. So. You have good eyes. Clearly. <laughs> I have to go. Mm. <laughs> these are just districts. So there. commercial. Well, they say clearly it's just intent. any for-profit enterprise. So we have to also define whether or not we're talking about non-profit or for-profit in certain areas. But commercial, the yeah, textbook definition is for-profit. Yeah, we have just a project just because up on, on South Street yeah. right now. And, so, and churches, of course, and, and so on. Well, and yeah. So that's, that's also a point that we'll need to... I'm not saying that we include a textbook definition in our bylaws. I think we just need to know the, what the words mean. <laughs> and certainly can mean a lot of different things. So, okay. Retail, the sale of goods to the public. It says in reasonable, relatively small quantities. And I assume that's, you know, that's just to differ from the wholesale. Okay. I really have to look on here because I didn't print it out. Well, I really, is, I really want to like print it. <laughs> this is, I just, I'm desperate to have this document. Well, at least a laptop connect to a projector or something. Yeah, like something like that. Just means so, you'd have to work from there. Yeah. That's, I, I wouldn't mind doing that, but it's just, uh, I don't, I don't think that this can be a very productive discussion unless we have some visual aids for some of these things that we're, we're talking about. Okay. could use that laptop there. Yeah, that's fine. Um, is, it, is it possible to, to have it set up for, for projecting right away, you know, so we don't yeah. have much lost time here? Okay. Although, I'm not sure the document you want to project. Um, I don't have, I can, I can start from scratch and just simulate a whiteboard where I'd be writing on it. While you're talking about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So I just have a, a question, just yes. a clarification. If we look at the definition provided by Franklin for different zoning districts, it's not strict. Like for instance, each, say if it says industrial district, it says some commercial uses may be permitted. Like, so that seems like... Uh, is it, are we sticking to strict definitions? Are we sticking sticking to? It was supposed to be the intent of the district. That was the, the that's what Franklin says. And then after, so that is a title. You know, intent is stated, and then they have a use uh, table that tells you all the uses that are in that district. But when we're trying to add or subtract or change square footages and stuff like that, we have to sort of keep in mind what the intent of that district was. So that's why I'm not looking, I, I don't think we're looking for a strict definition so much as these are the kinds of things that are there or we want to have there. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, okay. 
So some of the terms that are used variously, commercial, industry, retail, business, office, professional. What are some of the other terms that are used in, in these generalized business districts? And I'm not saying in our, our definitions, but any definitions. Well, the biotech business, bio lab business is all it, now that, that's a particular type, but it is it is under commercial, and it ha and it talks about specific needs of a building in commercial. Does that make sense? Yep. Mary. So manufacturing and laboratory. And so yes. Yeah, so manufacturing of whatever that name of that company was that is taking ninety seven South Street. Like it. Like yeah, I don't know if I have a blind spot for it, but you know, I mean, they're manufacturing, but they're a bio lab business. So manufacturing's changed in the state. It's not putting bolts together so much as it's doing, that. you know. But manufacturing is a broad category that right. falls under commercial. Right. But we have also the nonprofit category, churches. Um, some educational facilities are nonprofit. Okay. Under the commercial, yeah, business, business is so broad. I mean, business is everything. It's all of those <laughs> because, right? Um, so that's not a very useful term for us to use. But industry, retail, office, professional, Manufacturing, laboratory, um, there's warehousing, right? Entertainment. Entertainment, good. Um, medical, right? Medical. In terms of offices or I'm saying anything that would call, or, fall under commercial. Anything you know, broadly speaking, just terms that are used that that are categorizations. Recreation. Recreation, entertainment. Would that be the same as entertainment, do you think, or or um, I, different? I don't know. In my own head, entertainment is apex with go karts and, and ball pits and Recreation might be a pool club tennis course. One's more active. Yeah. <laughs> One's more active. That's right. Okay. Is it ready? Okay. And that can be projected up there. There it is. Wow, look at that. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> okay, so I have. Oops. Oops. Where am I? Broken. Oh, the cable on the side. Oh, yep. Yeah. That's a touchy cable, isn't it? Okay, so. Typos. I think our audience of 15,000 is oh. watching this. <laughs> no pressure, though. No pressure. That's right. This is not <laughs> commercial. So, under commercial, we have. I can put it here until you have something you want to grab there. I don't know if oh, people on, would I rather look at the up. faces. No whispering. <laughs> so I'm glad you're typing and not me. <laughs> and I had no no idea where to put something like daycare. I mean, it just really doesn't to me doesn't fit any of these categories. <laughs> but um, but I also wanted to. And I wish. Oh, let's see. I wonder if education is this just deserves its own and not just under nonprofit. Maybe daycare is under educational. Yep. You know, they all, whether it's Oops. real school or not, there's a whole lot of preschools that are really just big. Support services. Hmm. Support services. Not like. That's what you're saying? 
Okay. And so under commercial, and then uh, I this didn't put this into a table, but um, this is Natick. And so this is how they say purpose to do this purpose of that, which is sweet. This is the intent. Mm -hmm. It's an old word intent. version. <laughs> yeah. An old word version. Okay, great. <laughs> this is important. This was just clear to me. Well, is much more. That's not what I need. We to move down to the it, they get into the detail. Of, like I've used all these large scale versions. I just have to remember. Commercial uses the flexibility. Oh. Okay. Land plan I was trying to convert, convert text to table. And major highways. Uh, That's a highway uh, mixed uh, use uh, district. Is that an overlay? Well, we put in overlays. We've been creating overlays. I still think that table has to be moved to the okay, middle. Okay, whatever. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put it down here. Doesn't look right. Nonprofit would include. It's a meeting Friday. Churches, some educational. You'll see my feet if you move this table over there. You come up here with us. Oh, like um. Um, you two, you charities? Two renegades. Also <laughs> yeah, but but it's charity. a fine working word for now. Okay, so, okay, so these I'm are really some of the, the terms table. that oh, are used yeah. under commercial. And these are some of the terms, or categories, I should say, of, of things under the nonprofit area. Okay? Does anyone have anything to add? Industry, retail, office, professional, manufacturing? We're not going to use all these terms. We're going to group them together. Just, just you know. <laughs> Restaurants, food. Oh, oh yeah. Were you oh, waiting for one of us to say that? <laughs> Can you hold hungry. on to that for so long? <laughs> um, my, my only, the reason I said charities in quotes, if the American Heart Association wanted to move in, it feels like that's office jobs, high paying jobs. It's not quite charity, so I don't know what that is. Medical? Uh, I don't know. I mean, they don't do research and stuff, right? No. Or, I don't know, that's one that popped into my head. They used to have a place right off of the Mass Pike there for a while. Yeah. Uh, but that kind of non profit, uh, I think that. Right. Fit in my vision of what we would want in some commercial. I just don't know what to call that. Right yeah. Now. I, I don't think we should get hung up on the word nonprofit or profit. Mm -hmm. They're all businesses. I just wanted to categorize yeah. since we were saying commercial. Right. Commercial is by definition for profit. So, <laughs> and yeah, but and I, we clearly, clearly have nonprofit uses right. as well. Right. Yeah. So I, I. But we don't have. Yeah, we don't have to. You know. Yeah. Go crazy with it. Okay. I think it's worth working with the labels, though. If we are going to say commercial means something, I don't think yeah. the World Wildlife Fund is commercial. But World Wildlife Fund is business and how it runs and right. how it pays. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So right. I think it's so, worth wrestling. But you know, with yeah. But some educational facilities that are that are nonprofit are still you know desirable. Right. Yeah. So. Right. So, um, Sorry, I'm just thinking if it's a college or a university, we don't have a category. Should it be a separate educational category or would it come under something else? So we could, we could have it under educational just broadly. Uh -huh. um, so, but there, there's some educational under commercial, so there's pro for profit, for profit um, educational, and there's non profit educational. That'd be the Kaplan test prep or something like that? Yeah, yeah something like that. How about hotel? We already have the overlay district up in two of them. Mm -hmm. Funeral homes? Well, that's a good one. <laughs> dying. <laughs> we're dying to get there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last guy to let you down. Hmm. Okay, so let's see if I can spell this. <laughs> Did I get it right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It would be just medical at this point. Okay. Yeah, you're right. It's medical. Okay. So, um, so that's what I suggest we do now is like group them together, and these will be the terms that we use, so we all know what we're talking about with one another, so we're not constantly debating the meaning of words when we're discussing this. Okay. So the word industry should say industrial. Okay. You're right. Okay. 
I personally tend to group office and professional together. To okay. me, that means the same thing in terms of use of a building. Okay. okay. We, I think we can all agree on that. Really? What? Yeah. I just, I just see them as being. Well, would professional? So then again, would professional? Could that could that be acupuncture? Could it be I massage therapy. Would that be under medical? I'm, acupuncture is medical. So it could be a professional medical building. Yeah, yeah. When when I'm thinking yes, professional in in the terms of zoning, this is again, this is just me in terms of how I visualize it. I don't think of professional being the definition of okay, that's law and medical. You know, that's that's a professional degree or is a professional occupation. But for a zoning use, it's just an office. <laughs> They're in an office. Okay. They're not doing anything other than sitting in an office and doing office stuff. Well, no, but, a, but a barber or something like that, or a hairdresser. Yeah, that, that I would consider more services. Oh, we have services in there? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Right, I'll be quiet for a few more minutes. So, so from the point of view of how they're using a building. So medical is different because they're doing appointments, stuff like that. <laughs> And an office use would be anything where you're just sitting at an office doing office stuff, <laughs> calling people, people so coming in to you. You would refer you. to a medical office as a professional? It is professional. But well, to me that's for the use of the building, medical well, you're, you're is slightly separated, different. You separated out the, um, a couple years but ago. That's, that's why I see them as being different. If it's, if it's an office building, it doesn't generate a clientele that's going to come to you. Whereas, well, in yes. my mind, if it's professional, it's, it's going to have traffic. Okay. So we could, we could so just not use the term professional at all. We could say there's the office use, and then there's the... But it's medical and... What else? What else that's like medical generates a clientele that's coming in all the time? So, medical including. Well, I know I go to my insurance company. Mm -hmm. Yep. They have an, an office. But they don't have laboratory type space. No. But they, you know, but they do have people coming in. Is it, you know? Just to register a car or something. Yeah. Chiropractor. But now you can do. They do everything there. Get your license plates and all that stuff. So, won't all that come under the like a uh, service uh, provider? They are all service providers. Yeah. Insurance, uh, HR, uh, tax providers, and lawyers. Right. That's true. All that. ETC. What's that? Is that a rough? Oh, I thought you said ATC. I was like. So, okay. Um, funeral homes. It's also a service provider. All right. So, we'll avoid the sticky term professional then. <laughs> Industrial retail retail is obviously includes <laughs> museums <laughs> on a dispensary. <laughs> yeah. A museum and Natick. Museums. Nonprofit. I wouldn't get hung up on the nonprofit versus profit, even though the term commercial definition that you came up with says it's for profit because it, with regard okay. to zoning, it doesn't really matter. It's just what you're yeah. using the space for. Fair enough. Just what uh, Madame Trousseau, that's, prof that's profit. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't call it a museum. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Uh, Wax oh, museum. Something, yeah. Mm. So, uh, anyway, just I think we are, if we are, if an end product is, this district is designed for these uses, we can say commercial, manufacturing, and nonprofit, and then we have defined what some of those nonprofits mean. I, I think that's the reason to keep them there. 
but maybe I'm misunderstanding your concern. I, it, we're talking about the use as it relates to the property. Right. Not so much whether it's for profit or not for profit. Does that make any sense? It, it, it's yes. more It's more about, I mean, yeah, when we get into a, a deeper dive on this stuff and we say, okay, do we really want to take, I don't know, 100 acres on South Street and, and give it to a, a not-for-profit and not collect any taxes? You mm -hmm. know, that's a whole different mm -hmm. discussion, but that doesn't come into the intent of the district, if you, if you understand what I'm saying. What we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out, okay, so we've got industrial A and industrial B, and over the years, those districts are starting to move around a lot, and they're not really like that clear industrial use that used to be what it was for. And so by going through this exercise, I hope you all appreciate what this exercise is, because it gets back down to where are we going with, yeah. you know, zoning in the town. Yeah. Um, I, I find that, you know, by keeping the nonprofits all together here, we might be able to use a shorthand in some of this mm. and say, okay, all nonprofit uses, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but we also know that the tax um, benefits may be different in nonprofit uses. So, but it's just it's just a useful thing to have things grouped together, so we don't we don't have to list five well, things. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying because you yeah. know you're just saying you know to give a hundred acre parcel to to a, a nonprofit, but if it's like uh, like Ted was just saying like Sierra Club or something, or or a, or a um, or an entity that could actually enhance the, the the brand of Hopkinton, you know, it could be something that's like, oh, it would be great, you know. Yeah, uh, there's two sides, right? There's right. The, the tax revenue, and then there's also the kind of jobs we create. Right. We could have a tax revenue intense business that creates nothing jobs, and we could have a non-tax revenue. But I, I like my World Wildlife Fund better than the American Art Association. If they made this their world headquarters, I don't know what our tax revenue would be, but that's a heck of a brand thing. Yeah, it's absolutely. Mm -hmm. real jobs with real pay. Right, I'm just saying it does get nothing to do with zoning now. Right, <laughs> but, but I think that after all of this, so, so we start looking at what's what's there, but then what what, um, what Ron was showing me was, you know, after this we've got to get into the into the setbacks, the, the, the you know, all the, the nitty gritty of, of some of this zoning and, and uh, you know what we're going to do in each district, um, you know, just the the uh, mm -hmm. nuts and bolts of it, because uh, it's beyond beyond this. Whatever we, whatever somebody puts there, you know, it's just a it's just a, a building with four walls. But we have to make sure there's enough parking, there's there's enough screening, there's you know all the other stuff that's that's important to uh, to the uh, look and feel of a town. So, in Industrial A, we currently have, I think we have all of that except for entertainment mm -hmm. going down, and we have daycare, don't we? We have restaurants, I mean, we have hotels, we don't have a funeral home. <laughs> I think we have everything at the end, except have, for... No, it's crematorium either. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's that's kind of the core reason why I wanted to do this because it's like a free for all. Right, yeah. um, are we trying to figure out what we want to do in Industrial A? Like um, the intent of the district uh, would be to uh, be an enterprise zone, Industrial A. Okay, an enterprise zone that would go uh, along with. Um, uh, Companies that uh, were energy efficient and al allowed for reduction on on our because one of the things that I, I read in that um, thing that you put out the uh, tool was that we don't really have any excess um, uh, water sewer we have no excess in in those areas right and so that was a very that was an eye opener for me because all the other towns that they measured did right. And so, I mean, these are, I mean, there's a way to, to skin that cat. It's, you know, to give particular companies uh, an enhanced 
um, density uh, for you know a reduction in services if they do meet some benchmarks for those services I mean those are the kinds of things that I would want to see that zoning kind of embrace mm -hmm. make sense mm -hmm. Well, we do have water, enough water in sewer in certain areas. That's just the, the point, is that we don't have, we, our sewer districts aren't, didn't grow with the area, some of the areas of town that grew. So it's one of the things that, that has to be looked at, um, is where do we, where do we uh, grow our sewer system to uh, further enhance what's I don't going know on. the background. I just and know what water, the water is one of those. It, it, in town, it all depends on it, it, Elaine smiled for a second there, too, because it all basically depends on who you ask um, when it comes to the capacity. Uh, because at one point, when we had um, uh, a company up on uh, South Street that was using lots and lots of water, they left. And now, um, actually, we didn't sell much water last year, especially since it was a it was a rainy summer. You know, um, as a town, we uh, one of the products we sell is water, and we didn't sell much water uh, last year. Uh, so, so we do have we have we have the capacity right now. And just the amount of water that the town can provide is limited by the town's water Man water management act permit that's issued by the state. So you can't just distribute as much water as you want, it has to be permanent. But we are, right, but pushing, I mean, we are pushing to get more from the state. But yet the, the, the easiest, most sustainable thing is reduction of water. That's by far the easiest way to hit, hit certain benchmarks. But I'm just saying, if we, if we looked at, um, and, I, and I think that this requires, you know, a couple of study groups. Um, if we look at, you know, trying to figure out how the zoning is going to, you know, change and evolve, we should have some idea of some of these tools that other communities are using to attract the businesses we want. Yes, I agree. Okay, I'd like to get back to this and then wrap it up for tonight. Um, so just just uh, see how far we can get on this. So commercial commercial being broadly defined as everything non-residential. Correct. <laughs> so. We'll just call that <laughs> non-residential. <laughs> okay, everything, <laughs> and then nonprofit is just a subcategory of that. Okay. Um, um, so can I just the ask? Big can I, so, uh, are we when we thinking industrial? Are we just thinking manufacturing? No, no. How is the different? What is the distinguish distinction between industrial and manufacturing? Well, and that's, that's, uh, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about in terms of, again, not in terms of our definition within our bylaws, but just the term industrial. Is that s something, you know, anybody, come out with what, what you believe industrial means. And yes, you can Google it. <laughs> product I did is earlier, produced. too. Hmm? Our product is produced. A product. But that, again, is that manufacturing, you know? So are they synonymous? Because, for instance, why I'm thinking, asking that is, say, for instance, uh, currently in an industrial zone, say, for Dell, uh, it's a software manufacturing thing. Mm -hmm. Software comes under office as well. Right. So is it office and manufacturing? Right. That's what comprises industrial. And that's industrial a very, very good question because, because that, yeah. We well, can yeah. manufacture and sell software. Yes, yes. which yes. is not producing a widget. <laughs> it is, it is, but it is producing something. And, yeah. and most industrial buildings will have a section of office to it. Oh yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but in that case, it is all office. It is an industry that that manufactures things, but it is all office space. It is not anything that resembles a manufacturing floor mm -hmm. because the software. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. So I think we can agree that laboratory kind of is in a category of its own, right? All of us seem to to agree on this category of office, just being general general office space that does not generate a lot of a lot of client traffic. Okay, I mean obviously clients come to see you, but not numerous ones every day. Okay, I was starting to to group together some service providers, high traffic, service providers, low traffic, but I don't know that 
I think daycare is this is pretty high traffic. But it's only at two times a day, <laughs> rather than all day long. But you're right. You know that. I think these groupings might not be useful. Well, I think a lot of daycare is maybe three times a day. They kind of have a midday shift. Yeah. Right. There's before school, then there's mid school, then there's after school, mm -hmm. and then there is after your work is done. So more up more here. More different drop-off pickup times. Churches are, are kind of in that low traffic category. It's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think as we have here in the past, the Zach restaurants later on is going to need to be broken apart. Yep. Um, the other part of this is um, the truck delivery slash how many visits, what are they distributing, <laughs> or is it, you know, is it just deliveries once or twice a day, or is it constant? Constant backup alarms. And well, then that, well, that gets into the, the, the some of the nitty gritty that Ron was talking about with the, oh. you know, with all the other stuff, you know, and you know, where's where's the trash going to be? In the dumpster. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not at the curb. Not at the curb. I'm it's screaming well around it. I'm screaming around it. So I'm just putting up here at the top the things that you want to consider, you know, for. All right. These are the. The variables of each of these yeah, exactly. uses. One thing I would like to add to the top there is is uh, uniformity of uses or buildings within each of the zones. So residential, uniformly residential, the industrial, commercial. There's a uniformity to that area. You mean a visual uniformity? Well, you know, size, scope. Well, I, I would agree with you, except for right now, mixed use is hot as a pistol. And that is how people are building and planning development today. He didn't say he wanted it uniform. He just said uniformity as a category to discuss. Oh. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if mixed use is allowed, then, you know, that, yeah. it's yeah. going to be in this area. Yeah, that's... that's yeah, the, st the state and the and, say and degree of uniformity pushing it. Have a, the state gives grants now to do your studies in order to do live, work, and play. Okay. All right. We're so good for it, too, right at that corner. Laboratory okay. warehouse manufacturing. So we still have to figure out whether or not we want industrial manufacturing synonymous or or we can clearly define what the difference so, is. So industrial is over manufacturing because it could be distribution. Mm -hmm. and which is warehousing, you know. Right, which is under industrial. Right. Manufacturing is different than industrial. Well, then we don't need to use the word industrial because uh, that's a higher level category if we want to use the it's very true. specific terms underneath it. So, so Ron, that thing that Ron showed me, New York breaks it down into three categories, industrial, commercial, and residential. And you see commercial, you were saying, is the overall. So. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, commercial is anything that's not residential. <laughs> that's basically what it comes down to. But, yeah, New York is probably right on because the commercial in New York is going to be all those retail stores as well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. and, and retail and is a category is of commercial. Is more manufacturing buildings and, right. so. and things with smokestacks was what it used to be. That's to right. say industrial to me is, is dirty, yeah, like, mm. old. Yeah, that's why I was saying we have to really start. And like, so maybe what we're doing now might be more up to date. I don't know, because they really aren't smokestacks anymore. And maybe it's not considered an industrial zone anymore. Right. That's, what, that's the nut of the matter. <laughs> yeah, because when I was at sure the EMC, they actually built things. Of industrial. Oh, yeah. Possibly, you're right, because it, it, the, the big buildings that were built up there were built as um, well, small warehouse distribution centers. Mm -hmm. After 495. Right. right. 
any other groupings that we can do or do we need to leave these all these categories more, uh, I understand the groupings in the top, uh, the things to consider, I, not just the tax revenue, something like amenities that makes our town more attractive, like raises the value of our town, that we have these things, we have uh, happening, uh, a restaurant with so many stars, or something like that, the brand value of this town. Um, like it brings additional, uh, is it image or is it I bringing additional image, business in? Yeah. Image? Something like an image, like some in my in my head i think hopkinton is a happening place because what what would you feel because it has a cool restaurant it has a nice place like what quality of life yes like maybe like for instance a concert hall would improve the quality of life or the image recreation mm -hmm. You, you took off support services, I think, but what about like gas stations and and things like that? No, I didn't put it. I didn't take it off. I put it up there. Okay. Um. So, um, you'd consider that retail? Yep. What about um, Harvey's and the sawmill? Where would those be? Would that be industrial? So it's not manufacturing. It would be. It's not manufacturing, but it's yeah. It would be industrial. I mean, technically, a lot of things can fall in two or three different categories. Right. Yeah. So, you know, we we. Well, the sawmill is retail, retail too. So. Yeah. It's it's can be retail. It can be service Services. provider. It can be yeah, industrial. And then you know the terms light industrial or heavy industrial are used you know, by people and. And generally speaking, I mean, I think that that makes people think of, okay, not so dirty, not so many smokestacks, <laughs> things like that, um, but still industry. <laughs> um, but again, not clearly defined, right? Okay. Well, all of it is definitely very subjective in terms of the picture it paints in Absolutely. each person's mind. Okay, so I think, let's see, restaurants, um, yeah, uh, let's not let's not yeah. subcategorize that right, that right now. Now, <laughs> okay. Um, and then what uh, what I'm envisioning is that we we have a matrix with these categories, and then we have um, the thing about you know truck traffic, uh, client traffic, um, you know, and do high, medium, low kind of thing. So we can see in a matrix what each of these brings to the immediate area and um, and we need then the signage also yeah absolutely so we need to we need to define what the top level of our matrix is what you know I'm sorry I keep doing these these items um, and any additional power. ones we want to talk about power water usage yeah. that sort of thing yeah mm -hmm. okay okay so it's uh, can you save this and get it to yourself and me? <laughs> you. Okay, quickly. Um, has everyone reviewed the minutes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do I have any edits? No. I, I was present and it says I was absent at the beginning. Thank you. Well, that's not good. Yeah, I was thinking that too. I looked at it and was like, wait, she was here? I thought she was here. <laughs> No, I forgot. I then I had to go back to the meeting to make sure I was there. I was like, really? Yeah. And so we went to the video. And I was like, did I miss the meeting or something? I don't know. But You're too quiet. <laughs> that, see? That's why I, have that's to why I come in five or ten minutes late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they like, no, you're going to arrive at this time. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions. All right. Thanks for moving back because I don't know whether I should be watching you on the screen or looking down at you. <laughs> very confusing. I was thinking um, how we get on TV with all of us looking like I'm <laughs> <sleep. laughs> Yeah. <I'm sorry. laughs> We're not really set up for a good performance. Um, okay. Are we, are we still on? Uh, yes, we are. Um, next meeting is, let's see here, February 4th, Monday, at 7 o'clock. 
The following meeting is supposed to be on Monday the 18th. That's um, school break. President's Day. Week. Oh, yeah. oh, that's, and also President's Day holiday. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't know if there's a rule about not being able to meet during school break or if it's just the holiday. Just the holiday. Okay. Are people going to be around during break? I'm out. You're out. Anyone else? I, I'm You're here? Or out. 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 Okay. I'm out early in the I'm week. Here. My school doesn't have a break that week. Oh. I'm working. I'm, I'm, I could be here. Break or not break. We haven't made any plans to visit colleges. So if you were, if we're not going to meet on that Monday, what day did you have as an, have as an alternate? Well, you're going to be out early in the week, right? Yes. We'd have, we'd have to do something later in the week if we're going to, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six is enough, right? Mm-hmm. Six. You get it all. Um, Wednesday is no good. Everything's okay for me other than Wednesday. Okay. So Thursday? I can't do Thursday. Either. Can't do Thursday? Okay. That's a tough week. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's okay. And the following week, of course, is a planning board meeting. So we would not then meet again until March 4th. What about the, the Tuesday? Is that Selectman? Oh, Tuesday, yeah. the 26th, Selectman? Yeah. I have Congo. Oh, we already said it's so Selectman. Doesn't matter. <laughs> And we, so, we said no to Tuesday the 19th because we were missing too many? Yeah. I get Design Review Board. I'm sorry? I get Design Review Board on Tuesday night. Okay. Yeah, it sounds sounds like we cannot so we're meet again. March. Just Yep, just February 4th and then March 4th. Okay. All right. It's a good break, too. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second? I was in favor. Okay, there's a second. Is there a second? Can I second? Okay, thank you. Um, all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.